For this week's video, I figured I'd do something a little different. I would uh, delve into After Effects a little bit, just to show you a quick way to set up a nifty-looking background like this. It's, you know, not complicated, not simple. My name is D.W. Berman, and I do graphics tutorials online. Um, I also sell some tutorials for Lightwave 3D over at Liberty3D.com, so if you want to check that out, feel free. Um, very simple setup. It's only a few solids here and some text layers, and we see this little reflection there. I'll even show you how to set that up as well. Uh, it's the simple model. But let's start from scratch. So let's come up here and select New Project. There we go. New Project, nothing in it. Okay, let me pull up my project window here. Uh, I'm going to make a new comp by clicking on the little frame down here. And uh, we'll just call it AE Backdrop because it's a not very creative name. I don't really have a project. Let me hit Enter. Select and hit Enter. I'm going to rename this because I don't need a capital A there. Okay. Um, you notice down here it says 8BPC. That is the color depth of our project or of our current comp. So I'm going to Alt-click on it to... Uh, cycle to a different color depth just because when we are doing these subtle shades of color um, these slight gradients you can sometimes see banding and it's not going to make any difference on you know, watching this on YouTube because the compression is going to add those banding that banding back in but we don't need to see it while we work so okay I have a new comp um, let me add a new layer and the layer I want to add is a new solid layer. That's the keyboard command for that is Control Y. And um, let's make this. I already did this before today, so I don't want to. I know I don't want a straight black here. So let's uh, throw in something like this with the hue at 209, saturation at 72%, and the uh, brightness at 12%. That'll give us our background color. It's a dark royal blue according to this. I could have just made the backdrop, the the composition backdrop that color, but you know I actually want it to be a solid color. Okay, new solid, control Y. Let's pick a color for that. Let's make it a light pale blue. And there it is. I'm gonna come up here to my mask tool and I'm going to change it from rectangle to ellipse and then I'm going to double click on it and that puts a ellipse on it. If you toggle this button here on the interface it turns active uh, masks on and off and sometimes you want them on sometimes you want them off. Right now I want it on so you can see the mask. Here's the mask. Let me hit F to feather and I'm just going to turn that up and let me uh, hit this little triangle here by the mask to close it and then open it up again and we see more options. So let me turn the expansion down. This is just kind of a general background glow. This is like light hitting the back wall of our studio. Um, it's a bit bright now, so I'm going to hit T and I'm just going to turn the opacity down. So now it's just kind of a, a dim glow. I'm going to add a third solid. Again, Control y or Command y if you're on the Mac. And this one, I'm going to make it white just white. You can of course experiment with whatever color setup you want. Hit OK and there I have the big white block filling the entire screen. Okay, back up to the mask thing. I'm going to change it to a rectangle tool and right around the center line I'm just going to stretch and drag and make sure you're dragging from outside of the, uh, the viewport window here to outside the viewport window. And uh, it's still looking pretty ugly but anyway hit F and that brings up our feather options. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to change this to about 10. So let me again, if I turn this uh, mask and shape path visibility off, you can see we have a, a softer edge there. I might actually go a little softer. There we go. We'll make it 20, 20 pixels. And again, my comp is at uh, 1280 by 720. Let me turn this back on so I can see my masks. I want to make a new mask. An another um, rectangle mask. Sometimes I don't rec do rectangles, sometimes I actually do a curved line in the back. But today I'm doing rectangles. 
So around here, about halfway down what's left of the image, so about a quarter quarter way from the bottom, just drag out another box and make it a big box because we want to crank the, uh, the feather up on this quite a bit. But uh, first of all, see our mask? We have, over to the right of our mask, we have uh, something that says add and we have inverted. I could do either I inverted, I could either say inverted, or I could do subtract. In this case, uh, it looks like inverted wouldn't quite work, but subtract does. It, this uh, basically subtracts this mask from this other mask, so now I just have this kind of bar going across the screen that doesn't work for me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mask feather and just crank it way up to, I get in this case right now, 330 pixels. Um, let me move my canvas up as I might need to make this a little lower. There we go. If the if you turn the feather way up, eventually the mask will fade out if it overlap if the feathered edges overlap each other. So you need to make your mask big enough to uh, handle that. I'm gonna move it up just so I, I really just want it to darken the bottom part. It's actually erasing the bottom part, but anyway. Uh, and this uh, white solid layer, I'm going to hit T, and I'm going to turn it down a little bit, because it's kind of bright. So about 72%. And this is all just according to however you feel you want it to look. So back on the royal blue layer, I'm actually going to shrink this up a bit. So I just double-clicked on the mask, and that selected it so I could move it up. I guess I could have just slid the whole thing up, but anyway. Uh, I may actually turn up the feather on this a little more. And expansion out. So this is all just experiment until you uh, get a look you like. And I'm going to leave it at that because I could go on tweaking this for a while. And, uh, you know, it's pretty minor at this point. Um, I might move these two top layers down. Nope, I need to move the royal blue layer up. I need to move the mask down on that one. Okay. We'll leave it at that. And uh, if you want, it's probably a good idea to lock these layers because you don't want to try to grab something else and accidentally move the background instead. So now that that's set, I'm going to grab my text tool and I'm just going to type my name. DW Berman, and I'm going to grab my pan behind tool, and I'm going to move this. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll just go back to my text tool, click in here, and I'm going to change my paragraph to centered. That'll do it. And, uh, yeah, there we go. One thing I would need to do on this See how I accidentally missed it there? Yeah. It didn't select the background. That's good. Um, I'm going to turn this into a 3D layer. You don't have to, but I'm doing it. And I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate, or Command D if you're on the Mac. I'm just going to drop that beneath it. Don't have to drop it beneath it, but I like to, because it's going to be a reflection on the floor. So there we go. Um, grab this little pick whip here and parent it to the first layer. So we have DW Berman, DW. Berman 2, and 2 is parented to 1. Um, making sure 2 is selected, just kind of grab one of these top points here and drag it straight down. You don't want to change the scale horizontally, just vertically. And there we have a reflection. I can move it down a bit, and you'll notice if I move the top layer, the original D.W. Berman, the bottom layer moves with it because it's parented together. Okay, let me drop it in about there and lower this one down and I'm going to change the opacity on it. And I'm also going to grab uh, my rectangle tool and I'm going to just make a mask around the text itself on the second layer and then hit F to feather and feather it up a bit. Now there is a pretty good tutorial, uh, probably <laughs> an excellent tutorial, on uh, how to create these uh, reflections in on uh, videocopilot.net. 
So you might want to go over there. I think they even have a tool for doing it. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail and make nice, soft, blurred reflections or anything. So I'll just leave it at this. Eh, makes for a nice short video today. So, yep, there we have it. We have a kind of a faux studio backdrop and a faux reflection, and it works pretty well. So, uh, yeah, again, just take this technique and experiment with it and come up with looks that you like, and I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, I have some Lightwave 3D tutorials at liberty3d.com, and be sure to check out the other videos on this channel and subscribe to this channel and like the video if you actually liked the video. So thanks for stopping by. I will uh, do some more videos later. See you around. Bye.